Another year, another challenge. This year, the team and I are giving ourselves one hour to find a watch for a new watch enthusiast. Let's get into it. Le Jour. There were a couple of pieces that really struck my eye, the Del Mar and their Rally Monte Carlo in a Tiffany blue-like dial color. After seeing too many obvious similarities to an AP Royal Oak and Nautilus, our attention was quickly set on the Del Mar in this blue sunray finish dial. Their latest Del Mar collection embodies a nautical vibe. It features a compact stainless steel case at 41 millimeters, 48 millimeters in length, and 13 millimeters tall, making it wearable and comfortable for daily use. The angular case has a mix of brushed and polished surfaces with chamfers, which is a nice design detail I found pretty attractive. I'm always a sucker for a pop of orange and seeing that on the seconds hand is always a welcome touch. The watch is quite charming with its retro and modern details, like the dome shaped sapphire crystal and fitted with a ceramic insert. And its addition with the date position at six o'clock perfectly balances out this practical retro diver. I don't know why I didn't discover this brand earlier. Maybe the thought of meshing firefighting in the UK and watches never really crossed my mind, but I finally had the chance to see these up close in person and I was really intrigued by their story and even more in their watch design. Their Fuel Edition watch from their Triumph collection is a standout. It's a Salita powered chronograph with a clever dial design that kind of looks like you're looking into an instrument panel. In fact, it gets its inspiration from fire engine dashboards. On the case back, it reads, in case of fire, break glass badging on it. Really tying the overall theme for the brand. And to be honest, I was afraid it might be, well, a bit cheesy, but William Wood really pulls this off tastefully. To really round things out is how they upcycle the straps by making them out of old fire hose. Not only is this a great sustainable way to produce straps, but they also make for a super comfortable wearing experience. Overall, I was super impressed with these. Christopher Ward. I'm drawn to really weird pieces and the Bel Canto is just a marvel to look at. However, for our new watch enthusiast friend, it was a bit too complicated, which I totally understand as he's only starting to build out his collection. With that, the new 12 is where we spent most of our time at Christopher Ward. The fit and feel of the 12s were great, and like all Christopher Wards, punch well above its class. However, there was something about it that really didn't resonate with me. Maybe because of its resemblance to a lot of integrated bracelet designs out there. I mean, it does have a lot of its own unique design elements, like its pyramid texture dial pattern and triangular hour markers and handset. But it's hard to fall in love with, in my opinion. What do you all think about the 12 from Christopher Ward? Abingdon. I'm always a sucker for watch brands whose founders take their interests and passions unrelated to the world of watches and pour it into their designs. There's just greater meaning behind the watch this way. In the case for Abingdon, the brand was created by a pilot, Abingdon Mullen, who wanted to create functional pilot's watches for women in the aviation field. After taking a look at the Jackie and having a quick chat with Abby and herself, explaining how she was able to use the watch to divide, multiply, and even convert currency, it's pretty cool to know that people are actually using the slide roll as a calculator. The Jackie is a striking chronograph with its Swarovski bezel and chevron motif seen on the bracelet. Which Abingdon explained to me is a pattern seen quite a bit in the aviation world. It's little details like this that make these kinds of watches appeal to not only watch enthusiasts, but people into other passions such as aviation. Fairer. I'm not too much of a fan of moon phase watches, maybe because to me they're a bit traditional in design, but these ones from Farrah really caught my eye. As with most moon phase complication watches, where you see them peeking out at the 12 or six o'clock subdial, the way these Farrah moon phase watches are displayed front and center, drawn up in such a way where they look almost cartoon-like against their three choices of dial colors is so good. They measure 38 and a half millimeters in diameter with their cushion case design and using a hand-wound Salita movement that is pretty nicely decorated seen through the case back. The choices of dial colors is pretty clever too as each dial variation gives off totally different vibes. I'm not sure which one is my favorite, but I have to say the Blood Moon Burbage model is pretty killer. What would you say your favorite is? Auto -drummer. On the topic of colors, Auto Drummer presented these Group B Rally Sport chronographs. They're inspired by the 80s integrated design architecture seen in a lot of watches at the time and is presented in a bimetallic build made of titanium and stainless steel encapsulated in a 40 millimeter case. Looking at the design of these watches and the colorway, kind of remind me of older Star Wars architecture you see in the prequel films, which gives off a super nostalgic vibe. And I'm not sure if you can relate to this, but it kind of reminds me of the original Star Tours ride at Disneyland. Can any of you relate? If Cartier Santos, AP Royal Oak, and Patek Nautilus had a baby, it would be the Manhattan from Mann. This watch clocks in at a classic 37 millimeter case diameter with its steel case, vertically elongated octagonal bezel, integrated bracelet, 
And if you're into seeing a beautifully finished Cote de Genève decoration on a movement, you get to see it front and center on the entire dial. Pretty neat watch, I'd say. Another watch they were featuring was their Brooklyn 36, which at first glance looks like a monopusher chronograph. But upon closer inspection at the subdials, you'll see a triple calendar complication that displays the month, day and date, powered by a Miyota automatic caliber. I love seeing brands embrace the 36 millimeter case size. They're just so compact and comfortable to wear on the wrist. And for some reason, the proportions on these smaller cases just work. Although I saw Duckworth Prestix at last year's Wind Up Watch Fair, I don't know why I didn't stop by the booth just to take a quick look at their watches. I also didn't know that the company name was almost 100 years old until I took the time to talk to the founder and third generation owner of the Duckworth watchmaking name. They're a true heritage brand that I found pretty interesting. Now the watch that really caught my eye was the Bolton Verimatic that features a 39 millimeter polished and brushed cushion case with Arabic numerals that is the exact font type of the original Prestix watches of the time. And this is over a porcelain-like white dial. I don't know about you, but this model reminds me of the original first Oyster watch from Rolex with its wired lugs. It's a classic design in a case shape you don't see too often. And then there's Oris. Of course, all of us were here to see the new Kermit Pro Pilot X up close and personal. And lucky for us, we were able to see this before the doors even opened and even had the time to chat a bit with the CEO of Oris America. What can I say? It's a Kermit green dialed watch. It's fun. And most of all, it's officially a Kermit watch. Although I'm still going to refer to this Rolex as a Kermit. Jack Mason. I don't know about you, but for the past few months scrolling through the YouTube feed, this watch from Jack Mason is always popping up in my sidebar. And finally, I had a chance to see what this watch was all about. Picking the watch up, it felt pretty solid. The 40 millimeter mini turtle light case is compact. The bracelet and clasp is well refined and the operation is proper. In fact, it's rocking the Miyota Caliber 9075, which gives the Strata Timer true GMT functionality all under $1,000. I said it before and I'll say it again. This truly is the year of affordable GMTs. And lastly, we had to pay a visit to our friends at Minase. Last year, I was really enamored with their mid-size Horizon model. For this year, I had a chance to take a closer look at their mid-size five windows model, which features a beautifully handcrafted Arushi lacquer dial and their signature high Z case and case structure. There is something about the brutalistic design cues seen throughout the case and exposed screws underneath the sapphire glass in contrast against a beautifully displayed hand painted dial. I think this design philosophy is the perfect framing for their dials. I might need to contact them again to do an in-depth review of this piece, as for me is once again the standout piece from this show. But in the end, the decision was up to our new watch enthusiast friend on the watch he's walking home with. But unfortunately, like many trade shows, it's just a really overwhelming experience. And in this case, it was no different. However, he did his best to narrow down to his top three, the William Wood Chronograph, the Fair Moon Phase Watch, and Voltic Verimatic from Duckworth. All three solid choices. So what about you? Were there any standouts from our list? And if there is a watch that didn't make the list, I'm curious to know what it is. Until next time, I'm Chris from Clicky Bezel, and we'll see you on the next one.